Torzu Amira Ginokas. Rise, rise, Quas Mir Yavapan. There is no death for you. This is the audio log of engineer Sam Harding, dated April 5th, 2145. I have just completed repairs on the magnetic locks and have significantly reprogrammed the pressure sensors on the monorail systems. My fellow engineers and I are confident that the accident of last week will never happen again. The accident should never have happened in the first place. The internal sensors led the computers to believe that there was a vacuum inside the vehicle. Unfortunately, the computer decided that the only way to fix this pressure discrepancy was to open all doors in an attempt to equalize pressure with the outside. I'm going over 15,000 lines of code today. I can see no reason for this tragic event to have occurred. But somehow, the logs show the discrepancy is clear as day. Honestly, this looks to me like another case of a solid system going to hell in a handbasket. I'm confident that the layers of protection I added to the code today will prevent any such occurrences from happening again. I'm off to meet engineer Jim Torben at the access doors to the Delta Complex platform to try and troubleshoot a faulty track sensor that's been causing the door to stick. leaving Environmental Reprocessing Center. Next stop, Site 2. Who are you? What are you doing? I was waiting here on the train for my partner. He went to investigate what was going on, but he never came back. And now, I don't, I don't know where he is. I don't know what the hell's going on. But I bet it has to do with those artifacts we were digging up at Site 2. I bet they're somehow connected with those things in the Delta Complex. The Delta Complex isn't safe. You're crazy if you're going there. Remember, Look, I don't think this train is safe either. We don't know what's ahead. Environmental protection. In the event of an emergency stop, Marsec will be dispatched immediately for your safety. Have a nice day. Now entering Site 2. Warning, airlock malfunction. Please contact engineering to facilitate repairs. Thank you, and have a nice day.
Engineering, please report to Site 2 access ramp. Airlock malfunction detected. Welcome to the UAC Maintenance Department. This video will provide you with the necessary tools and information to do your job efficiently and safely. A safe worker is a happy worker, and your safety is our number one priority at UAC. Observe all signs and follow all procedures to keep you and your co-workers out of harm's way. Cleanup is one of the most important aspects of what we do in maintenance. This phase of our job keeps everyone safe, and research has shown that working in a clean and toxic-free environment has a positive benefit on overall productivity. Power generation on Mars produces two byproducts, steam and green goo. We vent the steam all over the base through vents, floor grates, cleverly placed pipes, and pretty much any place else. The goo is a result of the MFS process reacting with four elements in the Martian soil. It is not radioactive, but it is quite toxic. Remove all toxic spills at once. Hazmat suits are the best way to protect yourself when a spill occurs. And if you happen to come in contact with the goo, report immediately to a medical station for a scrub down. After a few days in confinement, you should be ready to report back to work. Report any rule violations to your immediate supervisor, and don't forget to read your employee handbook for additional rules and information.
Mission detected. This is the audio log of Charles Hollis, EAP Director, dated September 5th, 2145. In order to conserve current life support resources, effective October 1st, 2145, the Council has made a decision that all environment processors be brought offline in the general area of Site 2. Tomorrow, I will be sending out emails to all team leaders asking for an update on their asset relocation program to Site 3. We feel that we have unearthed enough useful material as it pertains to the project from Site 2 and choose to now devote resources in the exploration of Site 3. End log recording. Engineering. Airlock security override enabled. Engineering, please report to Delta Complex Access Ramp. Track sensor failure detected.
destroyed. Automated turret guns online. Warning. Automated turret guns online. Attention. Automated turret guns offline. Audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Assignment of engineers to the lower Delta labs has become almost impossible. In six months, we've gone from a volunteer surplus to a critical deficiency of qualified personnel willing to accept assignment. Increases in both pay and benefits have done little to help this situation. Through exit interviews as well as the weekly Delta medical brief, it's become apparent to everyone that the rate of sudden and unexplained mental illness is way beyond acceptable levels, even for Mars. They're derogatorily being called sub-delts up here, and I have a feeling this attitude will spread to other parts of the UAC. End of log. This is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Disciplinary Action Report 40C-8, responding to Mars City Administration request. Delta Labs 1 is currently addressing a problem concerning theft of security equipment. Four members of the security detail assigned to the Delta Labs have been reprimanded with three others under investigation. 
It seems caches of weapons, armor, and ammo have been discovered in various places throughout the Delta Labs. We've located some of the missing equipment and have information that we hope will lead us to more. I have a team investigating storage room 21D with security code 298, where I've learned stolen items may be located. I hope to recover all items and find all personnel responsible. End of log. Systems down. Emergency power only. All Delta operations suspended.
This is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Disciplinary Action Report 40C-8, responding to Mars City Administration request. Delta Labs 1 is currently addressing a problem concerning theft of security equipment. Four members of the security detail assigned to the Delta Labs have been reprimanded with three others under investigation. It seems caches of weapons, armor, and ammo have been discovered in various places throughout the Delta Labs. We've located some of the missing equipment and have information that we hope will lead us to more. I have a team investigating storage room 21D with security code 298, where I've learned stolen items may be located. I hope to recover all items and find all personnel responsible. End of log. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated October 29th, 2145. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling. Approximately 80% of all extraplanar participants exhibit signs of mild neuroses within the first 48 hours after returning from their expeditions. Within 72 hours, 75% of patients exhibit extreme signs of paranoid delusion and violence. We have isolated these cases in hopes of finding the pathogen. As yet, we can find no biological contaminants that would lead to such drastic changes in cognitive processing. It seems that whatever this pathogen is, it attacks higher brain functions and only leaves more basal functions in the lower brain stem. We've witnessed that a high percentage of subjects lose ability for rational thought and communication skills, and then the physical changes become evident. Subjects in this group appear to atrophy. Skin pales, muscles become slack, bone, teeth, and fingernails become almost translucent, veiny sinews of their former selves. I have never seen anything like this in my career. Our observations continue. This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated November 1st, 2145. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen of the UAC Darklight Armor Corps Division, expired today at 1543 of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. This is approximately 110 hours after his return from expeditionary missions. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. He was the last surviving member of his outfit. Four other squad mates, who also came back with Private Jensen, expired from injuries suffered on that last mission shortly after their return. Before his death, Private Jensen was heard screaming in both English and other languages. Something about demon hordes feasting on our souls. The other language was later discovered to be Aramaic. Due to security concerns in the area, I've secured some armaments within my office. Making progress, Marine? Your journey is futile. You will die, and your soul will die. stabilizer on the portal just failed after Petruger took the device. It, it was an artifact we had found in the ruins. He took it into the portal, and hell followed him out. You have to help me first. I'm going to try to get the teleporter systems running again. The areas are destroyed around us, so it's the only way through this part of the complex. You need to find me a working plasma inducer. It's all I need to get the teleporter working. You can look for it in operations. I have a security clearance. I'll unlock some doors for you. There. We don't have a lot of time. Please hurry.
Warning. Halon systems active. Access denied. Dated November 2nd, 2122. Patient 0432, United States, UAC Dark Light Armor Corps Division. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. Initial psychiatric interviews suggested it. systems deactivated.
Audio log for Phil Wilson, medical technician, Delta Labs, October 20th, 2145. Uh, today I witnessed the third test of the teleporter in the three weeks that I've been here. Volunteers are becoming harder and harder to come by, and it isn't difficult to see why. They all come back screaming like loons about demons, pools of blood. I mean, it's real fire and brimstone stuff. At first I wasn't paying much attention, just doing my job, but... The last was Robert Clayton. Now, I met him my first day here. This guy chews up rocks and spits out gravel. He's tough as they come. Having to sedate him and drag his drooling body to the isolation room, it's really freaked me out. I'm going to put in for a transfer as soon as I'm able. As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinder, dated October 15th, 2145. I, uh, hmm, I don't know exactly where to begin. Obviously, I survived the first trip and feel no worse for the wear. I, I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me, but I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life, but, uh, the flames and heat and stench of the place. It smells of death, decay, and burnt flesh. Tomorrow we're going back in with some of the eggheads, um, science division, to start securing forward positions and we expect to start sending out the mapping droids at the same time. I feel I must admit on a personal note that I, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or, or what we hope to prove. PFC Cinders, signing off. Chamber. It's the only way through this part of the complex. 
head into the chamber and initiate the sequence on the machine. And I'll take care of the rest. I'm not going with you. Good luck. But before you go, I want you to take something. It's a journal I made about the experiments. Uh, those things. It's all there. It'll explain everything. Get it to someone so this never happens again. My name is Ian McCormick. I'm a research specialist stationed on Mars, working for the UAC. My primary job is, or rather was, to assist Dr. Malcolm Betruger in a variety of experiments, though for the past year we've been focusing almost exclusively on teleportation. I don't know if I'll make it out of here alive, so I'm recording this video log to let someone know what happened, and with that knowledge, prevent it from happening again. Initially, the teleportation experiments were amazing. We were creating a new science. The prospects of it changing our way of life were, well, they were outstanding. I was proud to be associated with such an amazing project and someone as talented as Dr. Petruger. We noticed early on, oh, probably before we had completed maybe a dozen successful tests, that there was a variable delay during the teleportation. The objects are broken down at the quantum level transported and then reassembled. Each stage of the process should have been instantaneous, but it, it wasn't, and we didn't know why. We sent a video drone through and were shocked at the images it sent back. Just a few frames of video right before the drone came back through showed what appeared to be several sets of eyes looking directly at the probe. We had just found a living, breathing creature that was not human. Truger immediately sent out a request for volunteers. He specifically wanted UAC security force members because he wanted to capture one of these creatures. <sighs> I've made a lot of mistakes, but I am most ashamed of my involvement during the next phase. To get medical clearance to send human subjects through the device, I, I doctored up several of our reports to indicate that we had performed living tissue experiments. I did not regret it at the time. A few days later, when our third test subject came back, he was chewing off his own fingers. It seemed he was clinically insane. We started sending teams in about once every two days. The teams were reporting nightmarish experiences, sightings of things that ultimately made us conclude that the other dimension was not just another dimension. It was hell creatures we were bringing back. Demons. And then Petruger, he went through the portal himself. I don't know what he was thinking. It was an unscheduled trip. and He just went, and we couldn't stop him. And when he came back, he had changed. He sounded and looked the same, but he just... I, I don't know. He was, he was just different. And then he did the unthinkable. He took the soul cube the device that was discovered in the ruins, into the portal. The portal stabilizers just started to fail, and, and then living hell erupted into the base. Oh, we were stupid for not destroying the portals as soon as we realized what was on the other side. Oh, God, forgive me. I blame myself for my part in this. Please, someone, never let this happen again. I'm sorry. Ian McCormick. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Systems activated. Teleportation with the 